right. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday. Um, hopefully, for most everybody, it's a three-day weekend, and you can spend some time out fishing or enjoying nature. Um, so last month, right. we came Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday. Sorry, <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, last month we came to you and talked about young wildlife and today we wanted to come and talk about their moms and dads. So Jeremy, I'll turn it over to you and um, let you take it away. Welcome folks, wildlife enthusiasts and people just needing something to watch while they take a bathroom break. Hey, I know my audience. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we just passed Mother's Day. We're, Father's Day is right around the corner. So that got me thinking, we just talked about babies. Why don't we talk about outstanding parents in the wildlife world? So that's what we're gonna to do today. My name is Jeremy Lane. I'm a public information specialist for the department in Las Cruces. Today, we're gonna to talk about moms and dads. Now, when you hear about mom, moms and dads in the animal world, I bet some, some very popular species come to mind. Like you may think of, uh, how protective mother alligators are, or crocodiles too. How they, they carry their young from the eggs to the water in those really powerful jaws, but ever so delicately and take care of them and protect them. Or maybe you know about male seahorses are the ones who give birth to the babies. Or how moms and dads alike in elephant herds take care of the babies. But that's stuff across the globe and it's really cool but I want you to get excited and to learn about things right here in New Mexico. So the species we're going to be talking about today can be found right here. Let's get going with our, our first one is black bear. I don't think it would be a wildlife facts fast presentation if I didn't talk about black bear. I think I've done it in every one or close to it. Uh, black bears are super moms. They are known for ferociously protecting their cubs and can be sometimes a little too protective. Uh, sometimes if a jogger or a bicyclist surprises them, um, that has caused attacks because the mothers are that protective. Um, so if you see a mother and her babies, just give it a really wide space, keep your eye on it, and it'd be wise just to leave that area and come back later. Um, but certainly don't approach them for a cute little cub picture, or you might feel mom's wrath. Uh, Cubs are born during hibernation and they might stay with their mom for up to two years. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, and mama bears are affectionate and strict and attentive and devoted and sensitive to their young, uh, making them ideal for this list. Uh, black bears give us another cool lesson too, in that they can come in a variety of colors. And this just goes to show you that kids don't have to look like their parents. What makes a family is, is caring for each other. First off for our dads, our super dads, is the red fox. Now, both mom and dad red fox are pretty stellar parents, but I thought it's pretty interesting to talk about the dads. Now, the dad trains the, the young fox on how to hunt, and he brings them food. And slowly, they, as they grow and develop and get bigger, they can hunt for themselves. And at some point in doing this, uh, daddy fox stops bringing the baby's food. Um, so that they encourage them to leave the den and go find their own home ranges and things like that. But he doesn't stop caring for them cold turkey. He actually will continue to bring food around the den site and bury it so that the young fox can find it on their own. And if that's not the animal equivalent of a dad using training wheels to teach you how to ride a bicycle, I don't know what is. Uh, next, we have Virginia opossum, or more commonly known as a possum. We've talked about those in these presentations before, too. Uh, now, possums are our only native marsupial in North America. So like kangaroos, they have a pouch, and their babies are called joeys. Um, and mama possum can have four to 25 babies in a single litter. Pretty outstanding, right? Now, she only has uh, 13 nipples. So usually only the, the first 13 to latch on there are going to survive. But you can see a, a mother possum be loaded down with all these babies. Um, they stay with mom for about 100 days. And then when they're big enough to leave the pouch, they're going to ride on her back everywhere that she goes. And even while there are babies on her, on her back, there might be another litter developing in her pouch. So that is a lot of passengers. So I thought it'd be kind of cute to make that into a car commercial. 
possum, nature's minivan. It's a lot of folks going to soccer practice for sure. <laughs> On our dad list, let's talk about invertebrates. Maybe we don't think about um, bugs uh, and, and, and arachnids and things like that being super duper parents, but they can be. Uh, here's one you might not hear about very often. This is the giant water bug. Uh, you may have, have heard of these be called toe biters because they can give a, a painful bite to swimmers' feet if you're unlucky enough to encounter one, uh, but they're, they're not venomous or anything like that. Um, after the male and the female giant water bug mate together, the female lays her eggs on the back of the male. And that's what you see there is a male covered in his eggs. And they'll mate multiple times and she'll lay new eggs on his back every time. And then they're stuck with him. They're glued onto him. They go everywhere that he goes and he makes sure that they get enough oxygen, uh, make sure they get enough uh, time out of the water to discourage harmful mold and bacteria growth. So. Even for a, a lower class organism, that's some pretty still parenting. And after the, the, the eggs uh, hatch and the glue that holds them to him deteriorates and fall off and he can do it again. Staying in the bug world, let's talk about ladybugs. Uh, there is a ladybug mom with her eggs. And ladybug moms are the planners. So if you're a planning mom, this is for you. Uh, before their babies are ever born, they make sure to locate a steady supply of a bug called aphids. And that little green bug in the picture they're getting munched on is an aphid. And that's what ladybugs eat. These aphids are harmful to plants and to crops, to ornamentals. They're bad news. So ladybugs are super beneficial to keep these guys off our crops and plants around our houses and stuff like that. Uh, so before they lay their eggs, they make sure that they locate a good supply of aphids. And then the babies are fully grown in about two weeks. And over the course of their life, the ladybug might consume 5,000 aphids. That's a lot of pest removal. How about fish? We have a tiny little fish, only about two inches long, called a brook stickleback. Now this is a non-native species, uh, but it has been found in the Rio Grande near Albuquerque and in the Canadian River in our state. Uh, the male that we see there makes a sticky nest using grasses and stuff like that. And the female is attracted to him and his nest building skills. And she lays her eggs in there, which he fertilizes. And then he runs her off because he's going to take care of these babies solely by himself. Um, he defends them from predators, fighting ferociously and things like that. Again, he's just a little tiny fish. <laughs> um, but he'll also fan his eggs with his tail uh, at, 400 beats per minute, and sometimes for more than half a day. He'll make sure, moving his tail around, that those eggs are getting oxygen-rich water flow over them to develop properly. Um, because they're a small fish, and I guess maybe because they spend, expend a lot of energy too, uh, sticklebacks are considered, considered an annual species, and the male will die later in that year after caring for his young. Now, desert bighorn sheep. We have a couple of different bighorn sheep uh, types in, in our state. We have the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, and we also have desert bighorn sheep. You may have heard the expression that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, desert bighorn sheep definitely work together to take care of their babies. So uh, after the lambs, the, the, the young sheep are born, they are cared for by a group of ewes, the females, um, in what's called like a nursery group. Uh, there could be 25 babies, there could be 100, depending on the size of the herd. And so the mothers will go look for food and forage, replenish their energy supplies and things like that, while maybe non-related, maybe related other females in the herd will care for these babies, will watch them and protect them and leave them around and stuff like that. Then mom comes back, nurses the babies, and gives the babysitter a break. So it's a, it's a team effort. And by six or eight months, the lambs are eating solid food, and then they will travel with their moms. And there's a mom and her baby. Last but not least, we have a, a bird called a Wilson Sparrow, and I promise I did not make that name up. It's a real bird. Uh, there are several species of fowler rope, and um, we have one that you can see in coming northern New Mexico, but it counts, still counts, it's in New Mexico. Um, in most bird species, if I were to show you a pair of them, like here's a pair of fowl ropes there, <clears throat> you can find the most colorful one and say that's going to be the male. 
the male is colorful to attract uh, females' attention. And the female is usually more drab because she usually does a lot of the egg sitting and needs to be more camouflaged and less susceptible to predation. However, phalaropes, these skinny little um, sandpipers, completely reverse those roles, not only in physical appearance, but in, in egg sitting responsibilities. So what you see here is that one, that, that bird on the left with the really red colored neck is actually the female. And the drab colored one closer to the front of that photograph is the male, completely different than what you'd normally see in, in birds. And this is because it's the female who seeks out males and will fight other females, completely different in, in, than, than birds normally do. And it's the male that does 100% of the chick raising. He will sit on the eggs and he will raise those birds. Uh, pretty cool. Um, the female might lay uh, maybe four times in a breeding season, and it's almost always four eggs exactly. Wilson's phalarope completely take, uh, take gender roles and flip them on their head. So that's all I've got for, for the, the Mother's, Mother's Day and Father's Day edition of Wildlife Facts Fast. Whether you're a mother, a father, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a caregiver in any capacity, uh, remember that the only thing that makes a family is, is, is you loving and caring for each other. And uh, that's all I have for today.